maybe first off, before we get to Vancouver, um, you pitched with Central Michigan. Uh, you were a free agent signing. Um, yeah. Talk about how you wound up with the Blue Jays, how all of that went down. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So from Grand Rapids, Michigan, I got an opportunity to go to Central Michigan, which was a, a big deal for me coming from a, a smaller school, um, kind of in an inner city area. And, um, you know, I always had aspirations of playing professionally. I uh, never knew I wanted to go to college and Central Michigan ended up being a good spot for me. And um, I, my junior year came around and I had aspirations of getting drafted and didn't have a great season. Came back to my senior year and blew it out of the water and won a MAC championship that year with Central Michigan. And I was a MAC pitcher of the year that, that season. And I thought I was going to get a draft opportunity, just a late round, whatever. And uh, ended up being a free agent opportunity, which, you know, I, I was ecstatic about being able to continue my baseball career at that point. And, uh, you know, I got the phone call from, from the, the scout, my local scout. And uh, he goes, hey, the Jays want to sign you. Are, you. are you are you in? I go, yeah, when do you guys need me? He goes, well, how does, how does two hours sound? Um, we'll get you a flight tonight. I was like, yeah, I'm in. So, you know, with a duffel bag and a, a pair of dirty cleats, I jumped on a flight and I was heading down to Tampa. And uh, that was the start of my professional baseball career. Yeah. That quick, huh? Two hours in and there yeah. you go. Yeah, because I mean, my our season had ended. We didn't make it uh, out of our conference tournament, and I was home for about three days after the draft. Three of the most depressing days I had up, up to that point in my life, when you know I, I, my name wasn't called, and I was, I knew I was good enough to continue to play, and uh, I knew I deserved to at that point. And, um, you know, I was just thankful I got the call. So when the call came, I was ready, and I, I didn't need more than two hours. It didn't matter who it was. Uh, the Blue no. Jays didn't matter. No, it didn't matter. I was ready to play baseball. I and I grew up, I grew up in uh, like like I said in Grand Rapids, West Michigan. Um, naturally, a Tigers fan because you're you know that's our that's our home state team. But you know, I grew up going to Chicago, which is equal distance away from me, a couple hours. Okay. And I, I grew up watching the White Sox play live. I never went to old Tiger Stadium. I always went to old Comiskey. And uh, you know, I think having that kind of outsider like fan approach from where I was from kind of made me appreciate all teams and I never really had a favorite I kind of like players and it was hard for me to really jump on a bandwagon if, if you will but did you have a favorite player or pitcher growing up yeah I had a bunch uh Pedro Martinez uh huge influence uh Greg Maddox uh Roberto Clemente who I never obviously see saw play live but uh uh, very influential in my love and passion for the game coming through. And, um, yeah, I mean, all the hard-nosed guys, the Pete Roses and the uh, uh, Lou Whitakers and uh, um, Randy Johnson. I mean, I, all of them, man. I mean, all those guys had influence on me. Uh, when did you uh, take up pitching? Were you always a pitcher throughout? I mean, I know mostly when you grow up, you always play around the field. But when did you start to take up pitching? Yeah, exactly. I one thing that was always instilled in me by my father was you're not a, you're not just one position. All the kids when you're growing up, they say, "Oh, I'm a pitcher. I'm a second baseman. I'm a first base." No, you're a baseball player. You don't know what you are yet. You you'll figure out what you are when you figure it out. And uh, I tried to hang on to that as long as I could because I loved playing the game. So in my heart, I was a position player. I, I came up as a, as a middle infielder, as a shortstop, moved over to third base. Uh, I wasn't the fastest guy in the field, uh, but I had good hands and good feet and could, could get the ball over there, and I could swing it a little bit. But uh, I, went to, um, I went to college, and I, I was doing the two-way thing, and I realized that if I wanted to get good at really good at something I really got to focus on it and I decided with with some influence by the, my my coaches that pitching was probably the best route for me and probably my best ticket to the next level and that's what I decided to go with and it, it ended up being a, a great decision. Who helped you develop as a pitcher? Uh, I don't know man I, I just like to compete and I, I kind of, you can ask my wife, she'll attest this. I kind of obsess over things when I, when I get into it. And baseball, for me, 
was always kind of there for me and I always worked at it and it was always something I was into. So it never felt like it was work for me. Like they always say, you know, hard work is what it takes to get there. You know, you got to work hard. So I was working hard, but it wasn't from my perspective, hard work. I just thoroughly enjoyed doing it. And it was, it was my craft and I enjoyed being successful. So I knew the more that I focused on it, it all comes together. And, um, and I think too, for me, in my off seasons, I, I was, in, I worked at an indoor baseball training facility because we're in the Midwest. It snows sure. right off of Lake Michigan. We get that crazy lake yeah. effect snow as you guys are, yeah. are familiar with. Right. Um, uh, but so we have these indoor training facilities, which I was, you know, harbored in and that's where I, I honed my skills. So I go back and I, I train the kids, I give back my time, but I make a little money doing it. So it's a perfect blend. And I'm, I'm learning so much about my craft as I'm teaching it to, to kids and, and other people. So it, you know, I think just being totally enthralled in, in baseball over the years, just, you know, there's no way you don't get better at it when you're, when you're that much into it. So it also sounds like, I guess, in a way, kind of more or less self-taught. I mean, I know pitch and coaches are there there to help you out along the way, but it sounds like you're oh, really sure, sure, sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I did, like I said, growing up in those indoor facilities, um, I had an instructor, right? So I started, <clears throat> like I said, playing both positions. My, my dad coached me up until the point where I understood a little bit and I started barking back and then he couldn't tell me anything. And that happened around <laughs> eight years old, believe it or not. But uh, so at that point, my mom was like, okay, we got to get you in these, these indoor facilities. And, and they were new at the time in our area. And so it was great. It, it gave me a place to go on the weekends, um, do something productive. And I'd go and I'd get a hitting lesson for a half hour. <clears throat> and then I'd jump over and do a pitching lesson for a half hour. And that was an hour of my, my Saturday. It was great. Um, but one of my pitching instructors, my, my very first ones was um, – excuse me, my throat was a little dry. That's <clears throat> um, Phil Regan. Um, Phil Regan is an old uh, pitching vet, uh, pitched with a bunch of teams right. um, over the years, known as the Vulture. Um, <laughs> but uh, he's a Michigan guy, and he, he was, uh, you know, the old pro that was at our facility. He was kind of like an old legend that would come in, and you'd see him every now and then. And um, he was nice enough to take me under his wing when I was really starting to develop as like a, a young teenager and he kind of polished me. And that was kind of my thing. I was always a very polished pitcher um, coming up. I just never really had the, the blow you away stuff. Um, I had great command of the ball. I could move it around. I could hold the running game. I could field my position. I could do it all from, from a fundamentals perspective, but I just didn't have the, the crazy, the wild, blow you away type stuff. Um, but, you know, that was kind of my MO and I, I knew my strengths and I stuck to them and that kind of worked out for me, consistency. And, um, but yeah, that, that Phil Regan was a huge influence. And then on the hitting side, uh, the gentleman who owned the, the um, facility, uh, Billy Peterson, um, you know, he was our, our travel coach through the years. He was kind of like the, the, the head coach of the, that, that area you wanted to play for because he was super competitive. He didn't, you know, he didn't play the, the, the political game. It's, you know, the best they're going to play, and that's that. And if you don't like it, so be it. But we're going to go and we're going to be competitive, and that's what we did. Um, so he was my, you know, my first hitting instructor, you know, seven, eight years old. And then he ended up being my employer all through my minor league <laughs> uh, career as a instructor for his uh, second facility. Or, yeah, second facility at that point. Um, and that's Diamond uh, Sports Training Academy in uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan. Check it out. <laughs> okay. There you go. Nice. Yep. Okay, so yep. you, got through, uh, you got through Central Michigan. And again, uh, just to pick back up again, you're on the plane to Dunedin. Um, yeah. I guess you kind of, kind of get your uh, toes wet in the Gulf Coast League and then you report to Auburn. Uh, just take us through what it was like reporting to Dunedin and uh, kind of getting uh, your orientation there. Yeah, it, I mean, okay, so like I said, I got the call and two hours later I'm on a flight. So I'm getting down there later on in the evening, flying into Tampa, super shuttle over the, the bay. And it's my first time in the area. And I'm, 
getting late. I'm like, all right, okay, get to the hotel. We'll go to sleep. Get to the hotel and nothing was ready. It was late. Um, fortunately, the hotel, it was connected to a, a hibachi grill or whatever. So I went and had a hibachi, nice, beautiful hibachi dinner with this gorgeous young family. They were happy to have me with them because, you know, that's more of a group type setting dinner. But, uh, and then uh, I check into my room and uh, I was there before my roommate. I knew I had a roommate coming and it happened to be Pierce Rankin, who was my catcher in game three. Okay. So my very first roommate happened to be Pierce. And uh, Pierce, you know, he, he, this is, I'll let him tell you the story if you ever talk to him, but uh, he, he was, uh, he was pumped. He was like, yeah, I got a, a, a Latin player because he knew he was going to be uh, playing with Latino players. And he wanted to start speaking the language and everything. So he was kind of pumped about it. <laughs> and he come in the room thinking he was going to meet Jesse Hernandez, you know, from wherever. And uh, he comes in the room and he always says, he goes, I walk in the room, I was ready to like start speaking Spanish. And you go, hey, what's up, dude? <laughs> and, uh, you know, we kind of hit it off from there. And, uh, yeah, Pierce and I, we, you know, we, him and I, we still stay in touch to this day. So, um, yeah, that was cool. So I, I get into Dunedin and, you know, the next day we're on a, on a bus, a 12 passenger to, to uh, the complex. And, uh, you know, to be honest, it's, it's kind of a shit show uh, for lack of a better term. Right. Um, you know, everyone's kind of like super hyper excited to be there, you know, super machismo, as you can imagine, you know, you got all these young studs in there going crazy and, um, you know, just trying to figure it out. And it was, it was super fun. I mean, it was super competitive. You know, you meet a lot of people from all over the world, which is, you know, an incredible experience in itself. And, um, you know, you're all there working to the same goal, which is, you know, when you step back and look at it, it's a really unique thing when you got that much talent and that much focus and drive towards one thing. It's, it's, it's a really cool energy that you, that you feel when you're around that. Okay, so you get through orientation, um, then you eventually get assigned to Auburn. What was that experience like? Had a terrific season now, oh, yeah. off your pro career back in 2010. Um, what are your memories of uh, pitching in Auburn? Yeah, Auburn was uh, was a culture shock again. Um, upstate New York. Uh, I, I got promoted after one outing in the GCL. It was not a very good outing. <laughs> But I guess my stuff was good enough to get me out of there, or maybe they just were like, "All right, we'll give him a shot and see what happens." But uh, I got I got a call that day after my outing. Hey, you're you're getting you got the call. You're going up. And I told people some of the people they were like, "What? You're going up?" I was like, "Yeah, I'm like yeah, I guess." So I that was my 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 first promotion and uh, fly into the I forget which airport I flew into maybe Syracuse and then the I think it might be Syracuse, up. yeah. And uh, the club, he picked me up and we drove through the back roads to get to the game for that night. And yeah, I met the, the double day uh, faithful. And it was, it was awesome. It was a great experience. I mean, um, you had a lot of older guys, guys who were just out of college on that team. So they kind of understood how the game worked a little bit more. And it wasn't um, more of an instructional thing. It was more of let's play and see what you can do and see if you can make it to the next level. And, I think that's why I got promoted because I think they understood that we were there to play and not learn. Um, but uh, yeah, I had a great start to my career. I think uh, my first outing was out of the pen and they played uh, Jesse's girl as my walkout. Okay. Figure. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I got out of the inning and that was good. But uh, the highlight of, of my, my real start to my professional career, I'd say was my first start which came a couple of weeks after my first outing um, out of the bullpen. Um, and that was in uh, Hudson Valley, I believe. And I, I ended up going, uh, I believe, five no-hit innings or five, four or five no-hit innings start. And we had our, our, uh, our farm director was in this crowd that night. And, um, you know, it, it, it was a great experience for me because it, it showed me that I could really compete at the next level and gave me the confidence to keep going. So, um, yeah, I mean, Dunning or Auburn was a was a was a really great experience. Great uh, first 
first taste of professional baseball um, in a small town and, and uh, you know, a place where you can fail and not feel like you're really, you're down and out. You know, you can get back up there, you know. Um, it was a good stop. And then Lansing. Or no, then uh, back to spring training the next year, which right. um, which was, that was a doozy for me. Um, so like I said, I, I do pitching lessons in the off season. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm doing my training all on the, the progression leading up to spring training to be ready to go in spring training as all pitchers do. And uh, unfortunately, it got to the end, and I didn't get the invite to actual spring training. I only got the invite to extended spring training. So there's two waves of guys that come in, right? So th that's meaning I there's no chance I'm going to make it to start the season, basically, right? So, um, and I and I know that knowingly. But the the tough part for me is I'm working on that program to start in spring training, and then you kind of got to reset, whatever. I didn't want to wait, and. I had nothing better going going on at home, so I figured I would go down. I had good friends who were in spring training. They were like, stay with us. You'll, you can sleep on my bed. you sleep on the floor, whatever. And they let me. So Drew Permason, who was our closer, game three, yep. one of them. Casey Lawrence, who went on, you know, he's, he's got a career still today yep. in the big leagues and overseas. Um, you know, I, I slept in their room all through spring training. So while they would wake up and go to spring training during the day, I'm getting up, I'm doing my running all around uh, US 19, all around okay. these these grocery store parking lots. I'm throwing a baseball at a fence in a tennis court. I'm I'm getting my I'm doing everything on my on my own solo in preparation for extended spring training. Sure. Um, and then it, finally those guys take off and then I get my own room. <laughs> I finally get my own bed for extended spring training. And then uh, I go through, you know, the next couple months of that, which is, you know, it's grueling, man, when you go through the whole camp like that. And uh, fortunately that was the year that we signed the Blue Jays uh, signed the affiliation with Vancouver to right. take over that, that club. So um we also had signed Bluefield that year. So everyone is, all the players are freaking out. Everyone wants to go to Vancouver, obviously. No one wants to go to Bluefield. Um, and no one really knows, but it gets to the end. They finally posted the day before the flights go out. And thank God I got to go to Vancouver. I was so happy. <clears throat> uh, Drew Permison, my roommate, he too was going to Vancouver. Um, so it, it all worked out perfectly. Um, unfortunately, we were also very close with Aaron Sanchez. Um, he went to Bluefield, ended up coming up later in the season. But Justin Nicolino was was like our, our fourth horseman. I mean, it was it was really Drew Permis on me, Justin Nicolino, and Aaron Sanchez. I mean, everywhere we went, we were all together. And um, Fortunately, we had three of us, and then we finally got Aaron, but lost Nicolino at the end. Um, but, uh, yeah, Van I mean, Vancouver, um, I re I recall, um, the flight there was long. We, I mean, obviously we went through a long camp, but it's so relieving knowing you're going where you want to go and, uh, you know, very excited to get there. Cause you know, I had never been there. I'd never met anybody from Vancouver. You know, all you see is what you see on TV and Anthony Bourdain, and, you know, the travel channel that's you know, that's all I know of Vancouver. So um, super excited to get there. And we finally get in. Uh, we sleep at the hotel the first night. And then that morning, we head over to Matt Bailey for the first time. So get to Matt Bailey. Super excited to get there. The beautiful uh, U.S. Olympic Center was just completed a, a year or two before or whenever the Olympics had passed through past before. So we had shared that uh, kind of uh, area with the facility so we were using their training stuff which was awesome for us um but the stadium was cool i i love i love intimate stadiums that have character i don't care how many you know people are in the stands i've played in front of thousands i've played in front of nobody it, it doesn't matter if you're in a cool venue that's the the energy that i like so uh matt bailey was aces in that regard um, they just got a, a big, huge screen that year, which made it really cool too. kind of brought some, 
some modern uh, touches to it and really brought the stadium to life and, and bring in a, a, a Canadian, the Blue Jays affiliate, finally to a Canadian soil in a minor league club on the West Coast, the only professional baseball over there. Um, we got fans. I mean, we, we started selling out every night. I mean, it was awesome. And then, you know, we were guys who were kind of tired at that point going through camp. But when you start getting the energy from all those people that were coming out and most of us aren't Canadian, we haven't really experienced Canadian sports fans. Right. They're a different breed. You know it. <laughs> I know it. It, it. You don't really need to explain it, but if you've, if you've been around Canadian sports fans, you know. Um, every Everything that happens, it's a, ooh, it's a, ah, they're into the game. They care, you know. It's, and for the most part, it's positive, and that's what I appreciated. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I mean, we got – Yeah, we got a lot of fans that year. And, our, and actually, going back to the first day we got in, so we get to Matt Bailey, and, you know, we get our uniforms, we take our team photo, we do our workout that day, and then we meet our host family. Um, Usha Tkachik was my host mother. I miss her. She's back home in Vancouver. Um, sending all my love. Um, uh, that day... Uh, was actually the game seven of the Stanley Cup, right? If you recall, yes. and that evening we ended all we went downtown to watch the game and, and all the you know the inner city, the streets, and everything, right? Yeah, <clears throat> game didn't go so well. No, and uh, you know the city started getting a little wild, and we we're right on Granville, <clears throat> and uh, next thing you know, we hear glass break and. Someone threw something through a window. Next thing we know, we hear a car flip over. Next thing you look over here, the riot squad's there, and it's Drew Permason and myself. First time downtown. We lived uh, we lived across the, the bay um, up the Canby line a ways, okay. over, by, over by Nat Bailey, essentially. So we would, we would jump on the train and go down all the time. Right. But, um, um, yeah, so we were downtown. That's our very first night. Like, we were so excited to get downtown, and they started rioting. <clears throat> so we, we see the, the glass break, and they throw a, a smoke grenade or whatever. So we go the other way, and I promise we didn't touch anything. We were, we were tourists with eyes <laughs> wide like this. That's right. And um, um, we ended up in a little pizza shop. So we're in this pizza shop. Next thing we know, we see the stampede of – people going in one direction we're like oh crap and they start flooding into the pizza shop with them comes the tear gas so the pizza owner kicks us out the back and he's like you guys gotta go get out the back 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 so we get out of the back and we run out of the alley we run out of the city tear gas in our eyes we get over the bridge and we look back and it's you know that visual of vancouver after that but the one thing i will say about that you know that wasn't the best behavior, but the one thing I was really proud uh, for the city was how well they responded and how quickly the people came out, volunteer, and picked up their mess. Clean up, yeah. You don't see you don't see that very often, yeah. um, and uh, that's another testament to the, the people of Vancouver um, and the sports fans in general, right? Right. Okay, so your first season, in Vancouver. Uh, Ups and downs, but uh, I think I think for the most part, pretty successful. Yeah. Uh, pretty good, really good first half for the team. Came so close to clinching that playoff spot. Just missed out. Mm-hmm. The second half uh, basically went yeah. right down to the wire. Uh, I guess, what do you remember about the ups and downs of that season for you and the team? We were streaky. We were a streaky team. Um, you know, it, we were good. I mean, we weren't, I don't think we were the best team on paper, but we were a good team. We had a lot of guys who could play John birdie. We had John birdie up the middle all year. Um, we know the kind of player John birdie is. Um, obviously we had a, a pretty good pitching staff, uh, with Justin Nicolino, um, Aaron Sanchez, um, Noah Syndergaard. Noah Syndergaard. I, yeah, I forget about no, I mean, he was there for a quick stint. Yeah. But, yeah. um, <clears throat> 
Yeah, I mean, we had a good, I guess, I guess when you put that out of paper, but throughout the season, I mean, we had a lot of guys who grinded. Schwartz was a grinder over at first base. Um, you know, we got into a brawl that year. We, we brawled Spokane that year. We, I mean, we were, we were hard on those guys. I mean, we, we wanted to play. We wanted to win. Um, you know, and we, we showed up every night and we showed up when it mattered. And that's why we won. You really? touch upon, sorry, sorry, Jesse. You touch upon that brawl in Spokane. Um, yeah. um, what was that like going through a brawl like that? You don't see that too often in the minor leagues, but <laughs> what was that like? It, <laughs> it was, so, backstory. Um, to, go, to go back on why the brawl started, it, 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 it didn't start that night. Most brawls don't start that day, right? Yes, so we get to Spokane, which... Something about Spokane. I don't like Spokane. No, <laughs> we didn't. We didn't play too well in Spokane. Um, I did, I actually pitched <clears throat> on that trip. I pitched uh, the was it the first night of the trip, the first night we were there. Maybe didn't have a good outing. Couldn't get a good feel of the ball. It's very dry up there. Something about it was very dry, and I could never really get a good grip. I remember keep wiping it, licking, wiping. I could not get a good grip. Ball was up. I was getting smacked around the park. Anyway, the next night, they came out hot. That was actually the first day Kevin Patterson got into town. We remember Kevin Patterson. He's, he, looks, he looks like a superhero. He's probably about 6'4", 240, huge, first baseman. Looks right. like he's playing football. He got promoted that day. I was like, geez, look at this guy. Anyway, fast forward that night. Um, they go up like 10-0 in the first inning. They, they went on a tear in the first inning. It was getting bad. I don't, I don't remember a lot of the names, but they, they had a player who came up, and uh, he argued a strike three call for like the second out of the inning, and they're up like 10-0 with a runner at, you know, on first or something. And uh, Pierce Rankin was behind the plate, and he's, he's okay. just like, come on, man, go sit down. He's like, you yes. have some respect. He just, mercy. And uh, the guy chirped off and got in Pierce's face and gave him a little shove. So then that's when we immediately cleared. I remember we, we all ran up. We met at home plate the night before. A lot of chirping, a lot of shoving. Obviously, we were salty. We were getting our asses kicked. But, um, you know, at that point, we're, from our perspective, have a little respect, you know, have a seat. Um, so we, things cool off, and uh, the next inning comes around. We, we get the third out, thank, thank the Lord. And uh, Pierce comes up that, the next half of the inning. And – Lo and behold, he gets beat. So they sent a message. They're up 10-0. They hit our guy. Not cool. We didn't think that was right. So um, uh, fast forward to the next. We obviously lose that night. Fast forward to the, the getaway day. And, um, um, you know, we, we all have a inkling we're, we're going to get into it. We're going to retaliate. Um, we didn't know how or when or who or where, but the plan was to. Um, but really, we didn't get an opportunity to. Mm -hmm. So they had they had some some bad blood still with us, even though they kicked our butt that game, did what they did, hit our guy. We didn't do anything still up to this point. I think we won the game before, and then I think we ended up winning the series. But um, this was like the win, the, the game to, to win the series, if I recall. Um, so, Odor was on that team. Yeah. He was playing second base. Um, he's the one that started the – he initiated it. Um, Randy got hit in that game, I remember. They, they actually hit Randy in that game, too. I don't know if he mentioned that. Um, but uh, – so, we, we were just getting – they were ragdolling us from uh, from that regard, but the the series was in the air. So, um, the actual play that started it, 
was um, it was a ground ball up the middle, second base, flip over to Opitz, coming across. Odor came in with a hard slide. Opitz got the out at second base, ended up not making the throw because Odor made a good hard slide. I don't think Odor had a dirty slide, but he, he tried to initiate contact to get something going. He wanted, he wanted to fight. We all know Odor likes to fight. Um, so anyway, he does that, saves the inning, but when he turns around, he gets right into Opus' face. So Opus kind of does the hop, eats the throw, and just kind of turns back around, and they're kind of chest to chest. Right. It wasn't like Opus turned around and ran after him in, like, dirty slide. It was just kind of natural if you see it happen. But Odor came out swinging. So when he came out swinging, that's when we, we went after it. But um, I don't know if you ever get a chance to talk to Sykowski. Coach Sai, okay. he, uh, he knew I wanted to fight. He knew I wanted to fight that day. And uh, the, the way the, the – and, and it wasn't because I'm that guy. It's just I was, I was ready to protect my guys because I didn't think it was cool what they were doing in that regard. Sure. And um, Sai, the way it works for starting pitchers, the, the two nights before you're – you start, you're in the stands charting the game. It wasn't my night to be in the stands, and he put me in the stands that night. <laughs> he made me sit in the stands in my street clothes. Oh, really? Okay. So I didn't even get – I didn't get – I didn't throw one punch. I didn't – I couldn't. I'm at the fence like this. Oh, my God. Okay. Watching this all go down. So, yeah. That was, that was my recollection of the brawl. We ended up winning that game. Yeah. And uh, we had a long ride home to celebrate that series. I mean, it was a hell of a series, and, I mean, it was one for the, the books. I mean, if you weren't a close team before, you certainly were after that. I mean, you guys were all yeah, one for all, all for one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, it was cool. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean there, was, there was a lot of good talent that was in that league that year. And, um, you know, Bi Javier Baez out in Boise, you know, that's one of the big names that I recall then, but good talent. Um, like I said, that's, that's advanced A group is kind of that older minor league guy, the college guy typically, and then you get some of the, the prospects that get sprinkled in. Sure. And um, at, at least when you have uh, an advanced A and a, and a lower A, if you will, Bluefield, Vancouver. Um, and uh, yeah, we just had a good club, and we 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 enjoyed playing together. We had good fans. We loved playing at home. I don't know exactly what our home record was, but I would probably say it's better. Um, I loved everything about playing in Vancouver. I mean, I I was a room cheese, or I call him Cheese Drew Pomasan, our closer. Um, he was my roommate. Uh, we I rode a skateboard. Every day he had a razor scooter every day to the park, but we would, we would, cause we lived just a uh, few blocks up from there. We'd get on our, our skateboards and we'd go down and we'd get sushi. Like we'd get sushi almost every day because it was right. cheaper than the McDonald's actually. <laughs> okay. Probably not. Yeah. We, we would eat that every day, but, and then we'd, we'd come bomb the hill down right into Nat Bailey and go to work every day. And even that day we won. We came out just in our street clothes and hopped on our skateboards with all of our our fans and said goodbye. Right. It was cool. Okay, you're getting to the second half of 2011. Um, you're in Boise, and uh, what a place to end the season, the longest road trip you have to go through. And uh, your playoff uh, – Playoff fates are hanging in the balance, and you get the good news on the bus. Uh, Brian Longfrey uh, had the video of it, or somebody shot the video of it with Brian Longfrey getting the word from the yeah. staff. What was that like, that bus ride back when you got the news, hey, you're going to the playoff? Oh. That was, uh, you hit the nail on the head when you said that long road trip. That was the longest road baseball road trip in history. Um, it was beautiful, though. I mean, I seeing the countryside out there, I mean, the, the green mountains and – I recall that, but 
That was actually my first time watching The Notebook, too, I remember. I was upset. I cried. It's funny that I remember that on that trip, but mm-hmm. no. Anyway, we're, we're on our way back, and um, I remember we took a pit stop to get dinner, and we're waiting on the results of, I believe it was the, the Devils and was it uh, Salem? Yeah, uh, it was. I believe it was Everett. Yeah, you're waiting. You needed Everett. Or and, Everett. Yeah, Everett was a team you needed to lose, and they did. Yes. So we're 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 at this road stop. I think it was Spokane through. actually helped you guys out, if I'm not mistaken. Might have been Spokane. It might have been. It might. Gosh. I should yes. know this because I. So, so we're on we're on the bus and we're we're listening to long pre give the results because this is no, not everybody had iPhones. I had a, I had a Blackberry then. I remember that. Right. I could barely use internet on. And um, so really we're all getting the live stats or the, the play by play coming through long Pre's dad. I, I believe it was on the phone and we're waiting. We're all on pins and needles for the final play and it ended up being the out or whatever. And we went crazy and we knew like, I mean, some people, they were like, oh, we're, is the season over? We're, we're going to get home. We're going home. Or, But really, we want to keep playing. I mean, I mean, everybody was in. We're like, you know what? We've come this far. We're going to go home one last chance. Right. Heck yeah. So we got that out. You saw our reaction. There's a YouTube video somewhere. Yeah. Our yeah. reaction. We went crazy. I mean, we were pumped. And we had our, our win song that year, the uh, – uh, party rock or whatever it was, right? Uh, which was played a lot that <laughs> year. Um, but yeah, we we went crazy. We we got a, a new jolt of energy. We went back and made a tear in the playoffs. We got some new blood. We got Kevin Pilar. We got Sanchez. We got you know some new some new tools in our arsenal um, for the playoffs, and it worked. Um, you know, we all had pretty good outings, and the games that we lost were pretty close. We should have won the game uh, The game before I pitched, the game two, the night before. Right. It was a pretty bang-bang play at first. We thought he was safe. Yeah. He was safe. We, we won that game. Yeah. But anyway, it, you know, everything happens for a reason. Um, you know, we, we played uh, Tri-City pretty tough earlier in the season, but – they got the better of me, I recall. I mean, they were a tough team. And, uh, I mean, but, I mean, that, that doesn't bother me. I mean, when I go into games, it's not about what happened the last time because, you know, it's, you know, we step back and today. We're worrying about what we're doing now. And um, I knew it was the end of the season. It was September 11th. I had a little bit of extra uh, energy in me for the day, just a little bit of uh, pride being an American that day and um you know I thought I'd represent uh shout out to my my brother Steve McQuail his father is uh, is a serviceman in New York um nice. so much respect to to him that day and then uh yeah no I felt good and you know the game the game started uh exactly how I wanted to with strike one that's always a good indicator of where I'm going to be for the day because that's the only goal for for everything you're doing leading up from the breakfast you eat that day to the way you put your shoes on to how you stretch to how many pitches you throw before the game, it's all about getting that first strike. And I got it. So once I got that first strike, I knew it was on because it was my last last outing of the season. This is it. This is all you got. So I came out and uh, I, I gave it everything. You know, I was – I threw everything. Pierce – I trust Pierce. Pierce knows I trust him. He puts it down. I don't shake. He knows that. He actually wishes I, wishes I would shake more, but to me, it doesn't matter. I mean, if, if you trust that pitch, I trust the pitch because I'm not going to throw it if I don't trust it. So if you want to throw it, we'll throw it. So um, that's how it went. I mean, I don't think I shook him once that game. Um, we went on a tear. Uh, offense, um, they showed up a little bit later, but – no worries. I mean, I, I had faith in them all year. They bailed me out a million times that season. Right. Um, you know, we we were that kind of heart 
heartbreak team, you know, the, the cardiac kids. Um, so, you know, we had a, we had a tough squad, you know, Bally, Jones, um, Birdie, Opie, Burns, Schwartz, uh, Juan Mayor, right. All of them. I mean, we had some ballers. I mean, we played hard and, um, yeah, it worked out. We got that last out. Uh, Cheese drew Parmesan's on the mound, doing what he does. Got the out. Uh, you know, we jumped the field. Big hugs. I mean, I, I, it was. I mean, I can. I feel like I'm there right now. I can see it all. Um, it was a warm day that day. Beautiful day game for a championship game, which is which is kind of unique and, and cool. I mean, it's typically they put it on the grand scale under the lights. This that. Right. No, this it, was. This was perfect for our team and and I guess the the, the fan base at that time. It was awesome. Um, but uh, yeah, we won. We raised that trophy and had a huge celebration that night downtown. And we uh, we spent a lot of time. Uh, gosh, uh, down on Grand. It was fun. Right. But uh, yeah, we had a good time and then. We we all flew out the next morning, and it was as soon as we won it, we were out of there. And this is how it goes. And um, but I was I was so thankful to call Vancouver home for a summer. I mean, I I talk about it to this day. Um, that it's one of my favorite places on earth. And uh, I had a trip planned to go to go back actually a couple of years ago, and it it fell through. Um, so I haven't returned yet, but I'd, I'd love to get back there soon. Well, hopefully when things get back to normal, I'm, I'm sure they'll have you out for it. If you, if you ever do come out, I'm sure they'll have you out for a ceremonial first pitch at least. Uh, I mean, <laughs> Absolutely. anybody in 2011. And when I asked, uh, the first thing I asked, what was it like 2011, that final game? Everybody said, Jesse Hernandez, nine strikeouts, six innings. I mean, uh, that was the first thing I heard about. Uh, yeah. That's how I really got to know all about you. Um, getting back to that game, you, as you said, you went back, you threw strike one, you thought, okay, this should be a good day. You struck out five guys in a row at one point. Uh, I don't know if that's the many you've ever struck out in a row like that, but did you feel, you know what, this could be a really good day for me? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, and I'm not a stats guy, so I don't even remember that's how many strikeouts I had. I knew I had a lot that day. Um, and and Coach Cy Sikowski, he sent me the the uh, the stats for that day, the book for that day, my my pitch count and everything. And you know, I I don't I don't care about that stuff. I remember like the I remember the feelings I get when I'm out there. Right. And um, I knew I felt good, and I knew I was rolling. It felt like I felt like I could breathe. I felt loose, and when I feel loose, and I'm I'm smiling and I'm feeling good, it's hard to hit me. And uh, yeah, you, you felt, you, I guess, yeah, just what was your mentality like going into game three? As you mentioned before, kind of got hosed on a call where John Birdie was called out on a bang bang yeah, play. Yeah. You know, I mean, you, you guys were up already one game to nothing after AJ Meyer uh, mm -hmm. makes his I, Midwest League debut. I don't know if you remember anything about that game, but uh, yeah. I guess what was that like? I guess winning game that game one in Tri City, and then uh, I guess what was like for you? Energy. You're going to be pitching the deciding game. Yep, energy. I was energized because at that point, you you get into that that game two and you're like, okay, this could be it. We could go home tonight. And you know, as a competitor, you want to try to ignore that. You want to think, no, I'm I I've still got a job to do. You know, if we win or if we lose, I'm I'm going. So I'm still treating it like the season's still going. But we start getting ahead in that game, and and you know you kind of get think about it a little bit and then we could win we could win you forget about what you got to do tomorrow and uh, I got down to the wire and I was like all right here we go and then the bang bang and when it was a bang bang call that didn't go our way I was like okay we'll see tomorrow and I felt I felt energized and I was like I had all the confidence in the world I remember uh I'll never forget this Aaron he had just got promoted Aaron Sanchez, he had just got promoted to Lansing. So he wasn't even there for the championship game. And like I said, he was a good buddy. Right. And uh, um, he texted me that morning. He was in the airport. 
and uh, he was like, he's like, go get this. And I was like, I said, daddy's got this or something like that. And he said, he screenshot and he saves that picture to this day. And he looked at that all the time for like confidence. Um, so yeah. Nice. Nice. Yeah, that was. Uh, so you slept pretty well. You weren't tossing and turning before you got to the ballpark yeah. or anything like that. No, I th I felt so confident, man. I felt so good and um, got there. Uh, Magic was our clubby. I don't know if Magic is still around. If he's there, what's up, Magic? Long time, buddy. Um, you know, he made us a great meal that day, like he always did. Remember, I had two servings, like I always did, and. Um, I felt good. I felt really good. Um, it was a beautiful day, warm. I love pitching when it's warm. Um, yeah, and everyone everyone felt good. I never lost confidence in the team, even when we had runners in scoring positions and we couldn't we couldn't get it in. Um, I never lost confidence. I gave up. Uh, I gave up a little bit, and and I never lost confidence. We got it right back, right and back, yeah. you know. Um, and I was thankful they they gave me one more opportunity to go out there. And typically in the season, they probably would have pulled me before just based on pitch count, but um, they wanted to give me one more, and they gave me all I could handle. And we had we had a great bullpen that year, so I mean it was I tried to give my bullpen the best opportunity to to get it done, and and we got it done. Longfrey came in with that hard that hard curveball. Um, I believe who came was it Long Pre? Yeah, he came in. He pitched the uh, seventh and eighth, and then uh, Primason came and in. Cheese, yeah, yeah. Long Pre, yeah. Long Pre had that that hard over the top curveball, threw strikes right at you, straight. Yeah, and uh, you know he was our he was that setup guy all year, super consistent. And then Cheese, I mean, sidearm Willie. Um, yeah, man, he he got it done. Jeez, I mean, if you if you talk to Cheese, I mean, he he's one of the most anxious people you'll ever meet. But he's got he's got ice water in his veins when he's on the mound. Right. And uh, he doesn't know it, but he does. And uh, yeah, man, he he got it done. He got it done a couple more times for you guys. Right. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Part man. of all three championships. Uh, first three. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Cheese. Um, yeah. You you had your other playoff start um, in Eugene, and again, season on the line, and you get four innings. I think you just gave up one run, four-plus innings. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But, you know, again, season's on the line, so I guess how did that start in Eugene help you with your final game three in uh, Tri-City? Uh, I, th I think we were trying to be pretty strategical at that point. Um, you know, I think – I, I don't have a lot of memories from that game. Right. I, I, so I, I just remember Eugene was always pretty tough. I had had some success against them, but they had some firepower in their lineup. And if I was starting to flatten out a little bit, my stuff, if it's flat, it's not good. And um, I, Cy might have picked up on something and wanted to go a different direction, and that was fine with me. And um, – but I, I felt like I, I, I gave the team what I could that day, and, and we got it done um, in that series. So, um, you know, kudos to them, though. They were a tough team all year. I mean, Eugene, they battled. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Aaron, Aaron had, a, had a hell of an outing. His, I think that was his first outing with us. He, that, that's one of his highlights of his, his minor league career was that outing right. uh, in that playoff game. He uh, – he was always at, or at that point. I mean, he was like the young, um, the young golden arm prospect um, coming up. But he was raw. I mean, his stuff was out of this world, like Verlander type stuff. Mm -hmm. But uh, um, still raw, still kind of developing. Wasn't quite there, but he put it together on that day for the first time. And it, and you got a glimpse of of what Aaron Sanchez could be and and what he was. Um, with the Blue Jays that year. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, it was, it was a good series. I mean, and then we won it and our, and our, and our, I'll, I'll say to our, our ownership, our, our staff with the, with the club, I mean, they were so supportive. 
all of them. I mean, they were there with us. They were celebrating. They were they were so pumped to bring us back home. And and um, yeah, it just felt good. It felt right. You know, we felt like you know everything was falling into place just how it was supposed to. And and we came home and got it done. All right. So 2011 is in the books, and then uh, it's off to uh, Lansing in 2012 and Dunedin, and that was a very memorable year for you. You had uh, two chances for a no-hitter. It just went right down to the wire. Um, <laughs> the one I really want to ask you about is that uh, you're one strike away. Uh, you're pitching against uh, the St. Lucie Mets. Uh, one strike away. Um, what was that like going through that when you, you, you were that close to a no-hitter? Uh well, this is this is kind of like the full circle. Uh, now that you ask, uh, so Phil Regan, my pitching instructor growing up, he fast forward was St. Lucie's pitching coach. He's 70, 74 years old at the time. Well, like he's he's up there, still my minor league high A coach in the Florida State League, and uh, that was my first time seeing him in years, and. Uh, I'm pitching against him that night. And that's the night that I went to the final strike. So all night I felt, I was just thinking about what he taught me a little bit. It was a little bit more relevant and more fresh in my mind. And I just tried to think about those simple things and just get back to what I first learned. It was just my basics, stay, stay loose, stay comfortable, stay over your toes, keep it simple. And um, got to that final strike. I was rolling. That was an, uh, another um, night where I didn't, I don't think I shook one time. It was, uh, oh, maybe I did. I think I did shake and he got pissed at me. Uh, and Jack Murphy behind the, behind the plate. Everyone loves Jack. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I was throwing everything in the, in the repertoire that night. Um, I'm, I'm a sinker ball guy generally, but I can, I can pretty, Generally, throw most of my pitches for strikes when I'm when I'm when I'm good. And uh, that night, I was throwing everything. Uh, slider and my cutter play off each other pretty nicely. Splitting the plate with my sinker and change up. So I uh, I was really throwing my 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 slider cutter combo uh, to both righties and lefties. I was really having success uh, in off the plate with their. They had a pretty pretty good lineup. They, I think they were winning the league that year up to that point too. Um, one of the best teams in the league, and um, I was really having success throwing in at the back foot with my cutter, and they were swinging over it <clears throat> or getting early contact ground out. <clears throat> so my pitch count was good going late into the game, and that's that's a big part about even getting an opportunity to throw a, a, a complete game yeah. at all is, is keeping your pitch count there, especially in the minor leagues. I mean, yeah, you only have so many bullets to use, right? Yeah, but you know what? That's that's kind of my blessing, though, in disguise being a free agent guy. You know, not to say that they don't care about me, but they're a little bit looser with my pitch counts and and you know how long I sat between innings and how, you know how long I sat in the rain delay. Um, if I wanted to pitch, they they trusted that I was okay to pitch. Whereas if they had a hot prospect who sat, you know, they're not yeah. they're not going to put them in positions and they're not going to let them go a hundred pitches even if they're throwing right. A no hitter. So, um, you know, everything kind of fell into place for me that night. Got to the last pitch, trusted my guy behind the plate. It was the right call. It was the right pitch, and uh, he hit it. I mean, yeah. he, he made he made a good adjustment. I was. That's my approach. I'm going to throw it until you show me you you can hit it. Yeah. And that's exactly what I did. That's what I've always been taught. Here it is. And I'm yeah. not going to change until you show me you can handle it. And uh, it, it was like a, it was a hard, sharp, more of a ground ball with the eyes line drive, you know, between the, the, the short third there. Yeah. But um, good poke. Fair. Yeah. I tipped my cat. I smiled. Yeah. And I got pulled. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was my second. That was my second uh, yeah. shot at it, which – incredible I'm, I'm thankful they had the opportunity to even get close to that but uh it would have been nice to get one the first one was pretty nuts too because we lost the game i walked the first batter of the game so oh, i hate making this excuse we're playing in fort wayne 
Fort Wayne has a beautiful stadium. Fort Wayne Tin Caps, uh, they have a, a beautiful stadium. And, uh, but unfortunately, w- th- uh, that time of the year, the sun was setting right over like the stands over our dugout. So every okay. time I was pitching in that first inning, I was getting blasted with sun. Right. So I ended up I ended up pitching the first like three innings or two innings like this just to keep the sun out of my eyes. I didn't make that adjustment until after I walked that first batter, and that's my pet peeve is walking your first batter. Right. And I did that. And I was so furious. I was never, and that's and I was pissed after that. So I went on a tear. I I put my hat crooked like uh, Fernando Rodney, and I just started. I sat at the end of the dugout. Usually I'm I'm loose. Like you wouldn't even know I was pitching generally if whatever i was mad that day and uh yeah i i got to the end there i i just mowed them down and we just couldn't we couldn't scratch a run across the board and we got to the end and uh uh eight two-thirds or seven and two-thirds wait what got to my last batter and he had a hard comeback to me hit my heel of my glove went behind the mound i picked it up on the bare hand he beat it by a step Oh, hit. yeah yeah oh, and then i got the next out right. right and we lost we couldn't scratch the room yeah that's baseball for you huh that's baseball but it was fun that was cool yeah. i got promoted after that though so nice. it worked out yeah so uh you, you pitch uh you pitch professionally until 2014 um uh, unfortunately uh that was that was it. But I guess when you look back on it, you know you gave it your best shot. Sometimes it's meant to be, sometimes it's not. But when you look back in your career, uh, mm-hmm. uh, I think more more ups and downs. I think in the end. Oh yeah, I mean, it was so fun. I mean, it was it was everything and more I I could have asked for. I mean, I I uh, it was something I wanted to do all my life. I think any kid who plays baseball would say they want to play professionally, and I got that opportunity, and I. I made the most of it. I met some uh, incredible people along the way, and um, I keep in touch with those people today. And um, yeah, I'm just thankful for the opportunity. Um, no regrets. I, you know, I won championships. I lost a lot of games. I got in fights. I, you know, we did it all. You know, we did long road trips, break, bus breakdown. You know, our bus crashed into a house right behind that Bailey one time. Um, yeah, <laughs> we we did it all. It was it was a good time. It was, you know, I I had a great time and uh, nobody's I'm, hurt. I hope. <laughs> oh no no, it, okay. it was it was just a <laughs> poor poor mistake. But uh, no, Van- Vancouver was holds a special place in my professional uh, career, though. I mean, it was. Um, obviously the place where we won the championship, but it was one of, uh, one of the stops where I have the most memories too. So um, I'm very thankful for, uh, for the time spent there. Okay. Well, Jesse, thanks a million for this. This, uh, this was awesome. And uh, I know you mentioned maybe uh, coming out to Vancouver sometime and hopefully you do when, when the, when the team's in town and uh, maybe get to see it throw maybe a ceremonial uh, opening first pitch because uh, I think people who remember 2011 will definitely remember you and your uh, your day <laughs> in the sun that day that September 11th Sunday sunny afternoon uh, when you had uh, really a great start so thanks a lot for this and uh, all the best to you and yours and stay safe yeah likewise man I appreciate it be well <laughs>